Let's face it, parenting is the most important job on earth. Every day presents a stack of different challenges, and more often than not, the answer is outside of the box. On this podcast, we will offer proven strategies, interview pioneers in education, give insights into how to be successful parents, and even share our imperfect experiences of being parents ourselves. We're all in on this journey, and we will span the globe to find out what is working and who has the answers. This is the Sound Foundations for Parenting podcast. Here are your hosts, Darren McCarthy and Brian Powers. Welcome to the Sound Foundations for Parenting podcast. I'm Brian Powers. And I'm Darren McCarthy. Today we had the great privilege of going down south, meeting up with Dr. Pamela Bruning, founder and CEO of Deeper Dive Learning. She has a rare background where she had 30 years of experience in, in the professional field of education. But she started in the classroom, which I always love, and then she worked her way to administrative and now she's running Deeper Dive Learning. What a great meeting it was, right, Bryce? We learned a lot, didn't we? Yeah. She, she, so she left education and is now focusing on a solution uh, based on, you know, some of the things that she, she took away from there, you know, that, that needed help. Yeah, absolutely. Like, right, falls right in line with our philosophy of, of going to the solution. And there's yeah. a lot of solutions that we learned today, but there's also a lot of solutions on, on their website and their on their online trainings. What did you, what'd you get out of this, Bri? Yeah, I, you know, I got that everybody has to be involved and, and kind of, you know, what we're going through now with my older guy, it's like, you know, it's gotta be a team approach. And, and we're lucky that, you know, finally the, the school we're in, the teachers he has, they're, they're involving us more. And that's basically what she talked about. She's like, you know, families need to learn too. And I, I feel like there was, you know, you, I said in the, in the episode that there's no playbook to turn to, you know, what our moms and dads and, and folks that raised us did is totally different these days. And we need easily uh, accessible playbook that we can turn to. One of the great, great things that, uh, about her approach is that she starts out with, with the ideal. So, so in, for example, in one of her trainings, she talks about the habits of successful, the, of a successful student and a supportive family. So if you start out with the ideal, you kind of know what, what you're kind of working towards. And a lot of times people use like what they call the discovery method, where it's just a series of questions and you don't necessarily have the answer. So it's kind of anxiety producing. This is kind of like, no, here's what it looks like. You know, here's the habits of a successful student and a supportive family. And then she goes on to, you know, to talk about the power of, of modeling and, you know, choices and decisions and consequences. And this is just in one, one training that they offer. It's called the gift of structure. And I think it's, you know, aptly titled the gift of structure. Wouldn't we all love that? The kids ask for it. They want it. They want it. And we, and we don't want it because we feel like we are too structured as it is. But the things we need sometimes the most are the things we fight the most. And so it was, you know, that, that, that piece was, I, I was a, was a great takeaway. And there were some other pieces, you know, when we talked about family engagement and, you know, when we had Gail Moyers on, they, they talked about a study uh, about getting the family together and how that, how having the family together for, for dinner and having that interaction increases vocabulary. And there's a whole study behind that. And she was very familiar with the study, which I thought was fantastic. And then she also kind of pointed to this training that they offer, which is the family engagement course. And so that, that had a series of, of, of same similar concepts like expectation, consistency, follow through. So they use these trainings and they're, they're getting the whole community involved. You know, the police officers, the firemen, like the whole community gathers around and says, you know, this is the place to go to get the family to unite, to be engaged and kind of um, empower the whole concept of bringing the family back together. Yeah. I mean, she talked about how they sold that the family you product to a whole district and they were, they were kind of opening it up to the, to the rest of the town. It almost didn't sound real. It sounded like, you know, uh, some type of movie, but yeah, I mean, you go back to that statement, it takes a village to raise a child. And it's like, you know, that it sounds, everybody has to be invested. Um, and I think the biggest thing that she talked about that I like was that, you know, you could access, the, the, the content was easy to access and, you know, very user-friendly. 
Uh, and when, you know, especially, we know, we've got a crazy schedules. We want to be able to, you know, grab and go th with this stuff and, and implement it as quickly as possible. Fantastic. So without further ado, let's move forward right into our conversation with Dr. Pam Bruning. So here we are uh, with Dr. Pam Bruning from Deeper Dive Learning. Um, really happy to have you uh, as our guest, Dr. Pam. Maybe to start, you could give us kind of a, a little bit of your background and, and uh, you know, tell, tell folks that are, uh, are listening you know, a little bit more about you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I started out as a teacher and wanted to make a difference in the lives of students and was able to um, do that in elementary, middle school, and high school settings, alternative school settings. And then I um, decided to go and move into administration. So I was a school-based administrator and a district based administrator and primar primarily really worked in the area of response to intervention or providing multiple um, support systems for students, both academic and behavior. Um, and I left there really to, to kind of venture into the uh, business world to try to really focus on a solution. And it really started with um, educators trying to help them get greater learning to be able to um, incorporate into the classroom for greater student achievement. So that's kind of how I started, but obviously um, families has been a big part of that because they're one of the primary stakeholders. Yeah, one of the things that, uh, that really uh, was impressive about Dr. Pam's background, Brian, was that she, she was an administrator that had the teaching experience and, and a lot of administrators kind of go into the business and they get, they get, there's so, so many requirements on keeping up with your education that they kind of bypass the teaching piece and go right into administration. And so she's got that strong background in, in both worlds. And then she brought that into uh, kind of the private sector, working with the public schools to, to integrate all that knowledge that she had from the classroom and from the administrative perspective. So it's really a unique background. Nice. Yeah. And that's, you're hundred percent right. You don't often see that foundation that you have, um in teaching you know often in the higher level administrative folks uh you know at, at uh in education great um yeah i mean maybe just talk to us a little bit more on you know the motivation to to kind of come out of education but still stay in that field um and focus more on a solution because that's i mean that's kind of the the real passion that darren and i have behind behind this as well um, he had, you know, he had the, the background there as well, and he's kind of back looking for a solution as well. Um, and I'm, I have a young family, so I'm always looking for solutions uh, when it comes to that. So maybe talk a little bit about what motivated you. Okay. Um, I, think, I think everybody in education, the ultimate solution, or, or we're all really seeking, what is the, first of all, you know, what is the best or, or easiest way to make the um, strongest learning gains. So when we're talking about students, of course, we want them to make the best gains possible. And we know that there, are, the research tells us and experience tells us that all stakeholders need to really be involved. So you have schools and all the educators doing a lot of work to prepare and get things ready and try this uh, method and that method. And you have students who work hard and show up and. Um, you know, if the teacher is doing a great job, then the student can do a great job. And, um, you know, one of the, the areas that I always felt like we neglected quite a bit were really families, um, you know, and, and communities are a big part of that as well. Of course, our families make up the communities. So that's kind of those two things are really very tied together. So I think in education, we're always searching for um, to be better. I mean, we're learners, <laughs> and that's part of it. Um, we always want to be better, try something different, try something that, that might work better. Um, and life's changing, and with technology, just, you know, the changes that that really promotes in our lives um, really necessitate that problem-solving kind of, you know, framework for all of us, mindset. Yeah, one, one of the things that we've talked about in, in previous uh, conversations is is that parents are so busy uh, kind of th with their lives, running around, going from sport to sport to, you know, to homework, to homework, to tutors, to like so much going on that 
it's 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 hard to understand to even kind of capture the moment and be there to observe what the challenge might be for the child. And so, you know, one of the things that was impressive about your your work at Deeper Dive Learning is that you have a a training module for family engagement. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about that piece? Yeah, sure. And actually, we have a whole library of what which we call Family U. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's a whole library of family engagement topics and little mini um, modules, so to speak, for that cover lots of things. So we do have one that is called family engagement, and then we have others that really specialize on certain things like teens and social media or how to read with your child at home, building reading fluency at home, building math fluency at home, um, providing the gift of structure, which really talks about like um, structure at home that would enable good attendance and you know healthy living and healthy eating and things like that um, increasing student focus or understanding the teen brain those are all topics and, and many many more but uh, yeah the, the purpose of that is we were realizing the same thing as you said as you just mentioned the busy families running here and there of course we have technology now like we never had before and so we wanted to make something that was really um, mobile ready and something that was really interactive, um, short, sweet, really to the point so that it really captures people's attention, allows them to do a little bit of um, learning along the way. So whether you're sitting at a doctor's office waiting on somebody or at the practice field <laughs> waiting for your <laughs> child, um, you have an opportunity to just dive right in there and do some things. And because we realize, you know, with the world changing the way it is, families need to learn too. And they don't have as much time as you had mentioned, that intentional use of time for building healthy relationships is so, so important for our kids, for them to be able to be successful in our world. It's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's big part of it is the playbook. There's no playbook. And I feel like if you, right. you know, you turn to the way our parents did it, it's completely different. I mean, it, there really aren't many things. Um, there are some foundational things that we could, we could utilize, but there, there's not, you know, and we're kind of, there's not that playbook to turn to. And, I, and like you said, clear and concise playbook. There's a lot out there, obviously, but there's nothing out there that, you know, under the time constraints we're all under and the busy schedules that we could turn to and say, like, you know, this is really going to give me some actionable items that I'll see, you know, putting the work in, obviously, but I'll see make a difference. Exactly. And, you know, the other the other kind of objective for us was to try to prompt them to interact with their children. And, and as kind of silly as that may sound, um, you know, we all interact, but maybe not in a way that's um, focused toward learning something together even. And so there are activities that are embedded within that uh, that actually sometimes ask them, hey, ask your team this together, talk about this and then upload a response or something like that. Um, because they can find out something that they may not have thought to even ask their teen or their child, you know, as they're interacting and doing these things. So yeah, it's all part know, of that kind of growth and learning. Yeah. Often you're so engrossed in the moment, you know, I find that with my wife and I, sometimes I'll share an article or two with her and it'll just, you know, kind of hit that light bulb, something that you, you know, turn it on, that's something that you didn't think of, um, just cause you're living it every day. Um, <laughs> I don't have a teen yet, but I, I heard you say something about figuring out the teen brain. Maybe, man, you might you might be onto something. <laughs> figure that out. Um, <laughs> That's but, a lot of research right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, and there is. I learned. Unfortunately, I my teen was already grown up into the twenties when I figured some of those things out. Uh, but yeah, it's vital. <laughs> yeah, I just so, you know, go ahead, Darren. It was. It's. One of the things that I think is, is we always talk about executive function in the sense that like you don't know where to start. So, so where, where does a parent begin um, to take all this stuff on? And so the beauty of, of what you've created on this, in this online platform is, okay, I can start here and it will walk me through very in, in a nice kind of fluid manner step by step within that within that concept so if you talk about family engagement for example you know it, she, she goes into nice detail about 
you know, do this step, then there here's some practical strategies and here's some different different approaches. Like you said, there's there's some interactivity in there. And I, and I think that's some of the that's some things that are missing is that because I think parents are kind of inundated with so much really good marketing for really uh, how you say mundane kind of products. So mm-hmm. if they finally they finally get the energy they need that this is like this is going to be it. This is the thing I need to spark it. And then they get there and it doesn't doesn't offer pra- you know practical solutions and kind of a step by step thing. So you guys did a really nice job with that. Thank you. I mean, one of one of the things that we really wanted to make sure to do is make it so that it was personalized. And it is personalized. So, you know, five different people could take the same um, learning experience and kind of come out that the information is the same, but how they apply it could, could look totally different as far as, you know, their children may be different, they're living in a different situation or whatever. And so it allows them to personalize it as they go and interact with it. And so it's, it is more than just reading an article, you know, that is a, a start, but it, it forces them to kind of interact a little bit in order to really think through things. And, and we know that that's the process of learning. Um, and I would say that was probably the primary thing we wanted to embed that learning process within so that they're actually, and not just they're experiencing it in a deeper way so that they're automatically applying it to their own lives as they go through. Can you kind of give, you know, give us some examples on the, on the, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the structure side, because I see you have, you know, the gift of structure is one of, um, you know, part of that family, you, uh, course that, that folks can buy. So let's talk a little bit. Can you give an example of kind of what, what's part of that, um, those lessons? Um, yeah, sure. They, it, it really starts out talking about, the habits of a successful student and a supportive family. Um, and, and that's just a way to really think, think about that whole structure in general or just providing some structure at home. Um, then it goes on and talks about, you know, attendance and homework and how those kind of structures are important in our lives or the lives of students for them to be successful at school. Um, how parents can set their expectations provide consistency and follow through with the whatever expectations. And so they're experimenting with doing some of that. Um, it talks about modeling and um, parent consistency, which is, you know, challenging because we're all human and, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes to put yourself away when you're really focused on being consistent for your child's sake. Um, talks about choices and decisions, consequences, and how to, to do that in appropriate manner, um, supporting literacy, the difference between enabling and empowering, which is um, a really important thing. Sure. Learning how to pray, learning how to praise appropriately, so that you're maximizing the growth of your child. Um, you know, rather than than setting them up to have a more fixed mindset. So it does talk a little bit about helping to develop growth mindsets. For your child or with your this, child. This is all in one module, right, Dr. Pam? Um, yeah, it's all in one little module course, three little modules within one course. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That's, I know, so, you know, I just know with us at, at, at home, I've got an eight, six, and three year old, and they almost, you know, strive or, or cry out for the structure. Um, you know, if we, I, I think back to the holiday break, and, the, and my wife and I are kind of, wondering what was you know why they were so uh so thrown off and i think it was really the fact that they they thrive off of that structure that comes from the you know weekly schedule of you know school and extracurriculars and and uh you know those types of activities oh yeah That's- absolutely and we see that in school all the time where um you know they come back in and you can tell they haven't had structure for a while hmm. um but but when we know our children thrive with that, we need to provide it. And, and all, you know, we're all on that spectrum. So, I mean, all of us are adults too. So some adults need more structure than others. Some children need more structure than others. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's what kind of went out because you have a 30 year experience. I wonder if we can get a little bit global in a sense that like, like from your beginning of your career to now, like, how do you think, um, <laughs> 
how, how has the family dynamic changed um, where, where these, these things are becoming more and more essential to kind of get back to the root um, thought processes and, and walk people through these really basic, I wouldn't say basic needs, but fundamental needs. What do you, th what do you think, <laughs> kind of, what, what's causing this? Um, well, I think, you know, there's a variety of things. I, I think in some ways we have a lot more single parents than we ever have before. Um, and I actually was a single parent for a good part of my life. And so a lot of times single parents are working two jobs, um, you know, so they're busy. So providing structure for the family and, you know, com coming in and out, making sure everybody has dinner and that kind of thing, um, sometimes is a challenge. I think technology has, has brought many many wonderful things but it's also brought many challenges too where it's too easy to um you know put somebody on the phone or an ipad and not really interact with people um and so we see that you know it used to be when when i was a young parent it was don't put them in front of the tv too much you know because then you you'll lose some of that interaction and and it was really true so i always tried to make sure that my son had something to do with his hands at the same time as he was watching anything <laughs> so he would be busy in his mind and and i think that's a lot of it i think it's it's the way our society has has unfortunately kind of evolved into but it just makes that more challenging and we have to be more intentional i think well and it's you know sometimes as parents the things we need the most are the things we fight the most mm. you know i know mm -hmm. for i know if i if i if I'm doing well with my, my with my eight and ten year old, actually no, he's eleven now. A couple of weeks ago, <laughs> um, he, the, the I fight the concept of like I need you guys to get ready for bed at seven. I need you to do you know come home from, well first come home from school and then do this and then it's a really clear schedule. But mm -hmm. conceptually, if if I can do that, it really works. But it's almost like it's it's almost like this battle where it's like, yeah, I know I and like nutrition, for example, I know to eat right. I know what should, what I should eat, but I'd rather do this because it's easier and more convenient. But in the end, right. you, you know, that convenience is it pays it pays a price. And I think it's the same thing here when you're, when you're talking about structure and, you know, that, that family dynamic kind of starts to fracture a little bit. Right. I think that's an excellent example of what you just said. Um, you're right. We as humans and parents tend to try to, we just do what's easiest instead of really putting the child's first and knowing that, you know, it's, and this is an important thing, the consistency where we might have a great schedule and a great um, structure going on, but the first time we're cons inconsistent, it's going to take that child 10 times more to be able to come back into that structure. So you actually have to work 10 times harder to make you know, to bring them back in there. Um, and, you know, and that, when you experience that a couple of times, you begin to realize, oh, um, you know, if I can just stick with this, this is going to pay off later. And, you know, we're not perfect, so we're going to make mistakes and stuff's going to happen, of course. But um, if we can keep that overall function, um, you, you know, and I used to fight a lot of structure myself, just I'm kind of a free and you know, wild thing, or it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really fought it in the classroom as a teacher at first until I realized that if I build enough structure in my classroom, then the, with that structure staying in place, I actually have more freedom to do things um, kind of off the cuff, you know, because I actually had a structure to work within. And so within the structure, I could have that little sense of freedom and go with the flow, you know, kind of thing. That is That's fascinating. <laughs> Two days ago, I just heard this quote about a musician was, was, was work. It said, you have to work, 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 work to learn that song so that you can improvise. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, a just, perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. That's, that's fantastic. And that's, I mean, I think that's the beauty of what you've created with, with deeper dive learning is you, you have a structure for them to work from, and there's also accountability, but there's enough creativity where they're not just kind of just doing multiple choice questions. And you guys, exactly. I think you said there's 50 yeah. different ways to interact, right? Yeah, 80 actually, but 80. yeah, there's, there's so many different ways and, and you're right. So it's not canned, 
it is creative. They get to upload things. They get to, you know, do things that make it personal and they get to jump around. You know, that was one of the, that was one of the things that was my pet peeves was I wanted to be able to appeal to that person with ADHD, you mm-hmm. know, do the yeah, same thing here. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or even to even to work maybe, on maybe an issue that's happening in the moment. Right, exactly. I want to go right here. I don't want to learn about that right now. You know, in order to finish, they have to do it all. But, you know, it's it's meant to be flexible enough that they can do it the way they need it. And that's what we wanted. Excellent. That's what you need, you know, family, parent. You, you, you dove right to the to the basis of it is that, you know, there, there has to be some kind of flexibility or it's just not going to work. Absolutely. And it's the same thing with our adults. Our teachers are the same way. They, they want that flexibility too. Sure. So, yeah. so where, where do you, what's, what's your intention with deeper dive learning from, you know, for the future, the next year or so, next year, three years, what's the plan? Well, we are growing. <laughs> <laughs> we are growing quickly, and I'm excited about that. So, um, we were we really want to get this out to as many parents as possible. Um, we made sure that it was cost effective, so that um, really any parent could interact and do this. And that's really the main thing. We were actually in I was actually in a school district yesterday, and I talked with um, a lady who was purchasing all of Family U for the whole entire district. And one of the first things they're going to do next week, and this is a small district, there's only three schools, so they're rural. But one of the things they were going to do right away is they're going to gather all the community stakeholders. So they're gathering together the mayor, the police force, all the social service people um, involved in that community, um, doctors, all kinds of people were invite are invited to this meeting, and they're going to explain and show family you and say, look, you guys, we all have a part in this. And so if you can promote it with the parents that you work with, you know, we all work together. It's an, and we're a community system here. And so everyone really has access to this now. And that way um, we can really get the families involved. And, you know, one of the interesting things about um, family engagement, and this is something I didn't realize till just a few years ago, there was actually a, a meta regression analysis, which is really just um, looking at a whole bunch of studies. And it was related to dropout prevention. And they discovered that the second most important um, element to keeping kids in school was family engagement. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really, I mean. It was family, family engagement can make such a huge difference. That, that it was over and above even some other things like um, college and career readiness or um, mentoring, you know, behavior things. And, and there's a whole lot list of things below it. But family engagement is so, so important. And, and we have lots of studies that show that, that the more families are involved, the better chance those students have of graduating on time. And it, it makes that much of a difference. One of our guests, uh, Gail Moyers, came on a few weeks ago, and she was talking about a Harvard study um, that was talking about language and how language develops so much better when you have uh, fa- families eat together. So that dinner yes, table conversation yes. and the vocabulary, and I'm sure you're familiar with the study, um, and it, yep. it's the same exact concept. You get that, get mm-hmm. the family together, get them engaged, be more present be more, you know, have that structure so that you can have the flexibility, like you said. Um, some really mm-hmm. great stuff here. I'm hoping that, you know, we can we can continue our conversation uh, on different topics because you're a wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Meaning we'd love to yeah. have you back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, you, you put together, like I said, you know, I like the idea – that under Family U, that town kind of coming together or the, the district kind of welcoming the town um, to be a part of it and kind of having them as the uh, as as a family as well. Um, you know, it's that, that kind of statement of it takes a village. Uh, but it's it's the truth is, is to have buy in from everyone. Exactly. And and I love the, that study about the families at dinner time. We actually have a couple videos in several of our courses that talk about that very study. 
<laughs> and how oh, important that is. <laughs> full full circle. Yep. Perfect. Nice. And you and it's important to note that you got you guys built out your own infrastructure. So you did the technology behind the the the, the whole program, right? That's correct. And um, my I have a partner as well in deeper dive learning, and she was really the tech end. She spent um, thirty years really in the classrooms teaching teachers how to use technology in the classroom. So. Um, but we, she and I to collectively, you know, have about 60 years in education. And so we, what we, we knew we, what wasn't working <laughs> and uh -huh. we knew, we know what districts need as, and we know what schools need. We know what principals need, teachers and um, ultimately parents. And so we wanted to build something that really met those needs. And so that's, that's kind of how that evolved. And so we hired our programmers and got started and I did want to say too that all of our courses um, are translated easily in 80 different languages and it, they work well with a um, screen reader so that means they can the parent can set a screen reader to whatever language and it'll read out loud in that language Wow yeah I saw that demo Brian it was impressive cool. I mean she they literally clicked a button and boom it was in a different language yeah. Wow. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just like wait, wait, wait a while. It was a matter of, sure. it was instant. Yeah, sure. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, that's really cool. Nice. Good stuff. Right. Well, look, are you going to, we've kind of spoke offline and then you're going to, you know, give our, our any folks are listening, you know, the opportunity, uh, you know, to buy the programs through a special link. We'll have in the show notes uh, and in, in the promotions uh, through social media. Uh, we'll have a, a unique URL or code that they can put in and, you know, get a small discount, but also, uh, you know, get access to um, all of this great, uh, you know, training that, that you have available. Absolutely. So a lot of our courses are um, available online at our website at deeperdivelearning.com. And we have a store there. And so if you go to the store, they would just go to Family U and they'll see some courses come up. And we continue to add certain ones in there so that um, they should check back frequently. Because we probably release one every other month. Okay, a new excellent. One. Mm -hmm. nice. Okay, well, we'll Good definitely, uh, like I said, we'll have that kind of access. That's why it, it pays to subscribe to our podcast um, and, and become part of our uh, our group here and then um, we'll definitely have more information on how to uh, kind of access that small discount and um, you know get yeah. to the website and these show notes but we really appreciate uh, the time and I don't I think this is uh, one of many to come of uh, you know having you on on our podcast I would love to thank you yeah. thank you so much thanks dr. Pam we'll talk to you soon all right thanks a lot take care you guys Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Sound Foundations for Parenting podcast with your hosts, Darren and Brian. Find them on social media at Sound Foundations for Parenting. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time on the Sound Foundations for Parenting podcast.